Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi Jong and here I like to talk about luxury beauty. Today we're taking a look at the new Chanel LeBlanc collection for 2022. This collection is called Le Rev de Chanel and every year the Brightening or LeBlanc collection comes out and it's really meant to have very soft subdued colors. You're looking at more sheer formulas you know, kind of one of those almost like barely there makeup things. I always think of it as really great for like summer makeup application when you're looking at going like a little bit lighter and softer. And this is the quad 384 Imaginaire. So this shade here, this is a matte peachy shade. It's just very, very light. Let me add a second layer so you can see it a little bit better, but it's just not only is it very light, it's also very close to my skin tone. So it is a little bit harder to see in these swatches. So what we have here is we have a matte, this is sort of like um, a berry shade with a touch of brown in it, but you can see you've got the berry tones in it. Uh, definitely a little plum based. Then we have this like peachy pinky sparkle here. So there's, definitely some pink in here making it almost a coral but like a dusty coral with sparkle and then this is going to be a very soft peach you can see it's got some like yellow tones in it but it's actually um you know surprisingly not too yellow this one here is a slightly deeper version of the peach also matte and this one has a bit more orange in it so this is the quad 384 imaginaire now, probably the most popular item in this collection is the Rev de Camellia highlighter. And I do have a separate video on this already. It comes with this cute little kabuki brush. This is $80 for these two pieces here, which is $10 more than what they usually charge for these highlighters. Um, but you get the kabuki brush, which is new. And honestly, I, I really like the brush. Now, this highlighter is a really beautiful highlight. I like to use it, you know, as a traditional highlight, but I also really like to use it with the Kabuki brush to get just a very light wash all over my cheek and then top it with blush. So sometimes I do that and I do have that in the original video. Today, you'll see me use it a couple different ways in the demos. There are three new Coco flashes that came out with this collection. I picked up two of the three. So this one here, 168 Halo, I knew this was going to be pretty much clear, but I picked it up anyway because I love lavender and it does have a very faint lavender hue to it. So when you pile it up, you can see a little bit more of it. But regardless, even if you don't, um, you know, if you put this on top of another lipstick or lip product, it does add a little bit of a cooling effect because it is going to be like that cooler lavender tone. So I picked that up because I figured I'd wear it a lot. And then we also have 172 Flannery, which is currently on my lips. And this, both of these, by the way, have some sparkle in them, but you can see this is actually very similar to the eyeshadow here in Imaginaire. It's the Cocoa Flash version of it. It's like a brownie shade with some plum in there, some like berry plum. And then there are also two Rouge Allure inks. So these are the matte liquid lipsticks. I really like these. Um, I always end up getting these in reds, but this is going to be number 234, Evocation. And this is it. So when you put this on, I recommend if you wanna build up the color, put on a thin layer and let it dry and then add another layer on top. And then, you know, it's perfectly smooth, not patchy, very thin and lightweight on the lips. I personally don't find these drying at all. I find them to be very comfortable. So um, yeah, this is Evo Evocation. And there are also three nail polishes that came out. So I picked up one of the three. This is 921 Evanescence or Evanescence. And this is what's on my nails now. And I really think it, it's beautiful. So just looking at it with Halo here, you can see that they kind of have a little bit of the same tone to that, but this is really more of a soft mauve shade. You've got some pink and some lavender kind of mixed in there together. And it's a more sheer nail polish as all three of them are. So there's also like a peach and like a peachy pink. And then Chanel also released a new product. So. 
This is the Cielo Lumiere Regard, and there are two of these that came out. So there's 557 and 567. So 567, you can see it, you um, twist the bottom here to get this out, but 567 is the one that I picked up. And you can see it looks like a white liquid, and you've got this brush tip, and you put this out, and it adds shimmer. It can cool it off a little bit, and there's like a little bit of pink and gold sparkle in there. So look at that. You get like a little bit of a pink shift, but it's kind of like a pearly pink with some gold in it. So it's not like overly cool, but it's cooler in tone than the eyeshadow quad. Let me actually swatch it there as well. So you can kind of see this. So I have a demo with this. Today's look has it all over the eye with it built up more in the inner portion. And then I also have a demo and wear test to see how this performs over time. So this is a thin you know, liquid that dries relatively quickly. You've got enough time to move it around, but once it dries, it does set and it doesn't crease. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the demos while we discuss these items. So let's start off with this highlighting top coat. So the Stilo Lumiere Regard is considered a multi-usage top coat or multi-use highlighting top coat from Chanel. And I have 567 Scintilla Month, and you have one milliliter or 0 0.03 fluid ounces in here. It's made in France and it has a six month shelf life, which isn't surprising because it is intended to be used on the eyes. Now you can also use this on the cheeks if you are looking for like a hint of sparkle or glitter on there. And I was actually reading that that's gonna be the trend this year is to kind of have this look where you throw a little bit of glitter on your face. So this would be something good to do that with if you don't want glitter that's actually gonna be moving around. So just pop a little bit of this on with your finger or something and that could be a way to meet the trend. But the product that this reminds me of the most is actually the Hindosh Boy Tears. So the Hindosh Boy Tears is similar in formulation um, you know, you got this like sparkly top coat type thing. His can be used more as a highlighter. His is more pigmented. You have more of a, you know, champagne, golden, peachy hued base with the sparkle in it, but this performs the same way on the eyes as in they're both adding some sparkle. They do change the color of the shadow a little bit. Now with the Chanel one, really what it does is it just cools it off slightly and just adds sort of like a like a very faint milky coat on there, which helps to cool it off, but also helps to lighten it a little bit. Um, so you've got that, you've got sparkle, it doesn't budge, they remain all day, they're comfortable, you don't feel them on your lids at all, and I think this is a really nice product. So, you know, I'm glad I picked this up, and I'm, I'm actually really liking this. So I, Definitely plan on using this a lot. And between this and the Hindosh Boy Tears, I love the Hindosh Boy Tears product, but my one complaint is just that it's a little bit deeper in color than I would like to have. Like I'd like to see it with a, a lighter shade, which will be coming. So it's not really a complaint, um, but this kind of meets that need for me. Moving on to the nail polish. I personally really like Chanel nail polishes. Yeah, they're kind of pricey. I buy, most of my nail polishes are, are typically indie brands. They're less expensive, but I do find that the Chanel formula wears really well. I can typically get, you know, close to a week or so before I feel like I need to change it and replace my nail polish. And this color, I just think is stunning. So it's kind of like a sheer, like mauve shade. Um, very bright though for spring. Well, you know, like a soft pastel kind of shade, but I just think it's really gorgeous. So I'm happy with the nail polish. And moving on to the eyeshadow quad, I wasn't sure if I was gonna like this. So I, I almost passed on it, but I ended up kind of getting enthralled by the, you know, kind of this like, brownish plum berry shade and the sparkle shade next to it because I think the way that they pair together is really beautifully and I actually I really like all four of the shades the deeper peachy shade the last shade in the quadrant that's the shade that I like the least but only for my particular coloring I find all of these perform really well they last all day without creasing on my skin 
and um, yeah, I think they blend very nicely. So I'm happy with the performance and the formula of these shadows. Uh, it is definitely a warmer tone quad. You uh, do have a little bit of that cooler tone with the plum berry shade. And I like that for me, I think for the most part, I will almost always use that shade mixed with these to kind of cool things off because it is a little bit warmer, but I think it's a really nice kind of peachy spring look. So I'm very happy with the quad. If you're interested in something that's very light, easy to use, something maybe perhaps very work appropriate, this might be a good option if you're interested in these colors. So uh, like all Chanel quads, it does come with the little like velour case and the little eye applicators. I of course removed mine right away because I honestly, I very rarely use those. Moving on to the highlighter, we're not gonna spend a lot of time on this because I do have a dedicated video on this. So I'll leave that linked in the description box. But I think it's a really beautiful highlighter. I love the Kabuki brush that it comes with. And you know, at first I was kind of like, why would they include a Kabuki brush with this highlighter? I'm gonna use a regular highlighting brush. And I do like that. So I really like using the Sonuji Detail Brush with it, the Detail Pro as well. Um, fan brushes don't provide a ton of pigment if you're looking for very, very light dusting of the highlighter, that works well as well. But I really think the Kabuki was a smart move because this highlighter works so well as a base for you know blush and things like that or even just to use just the highlighter on your cheeks so there's a little bit of this champagne peachy vibe to it that's kind of the the color here that you're getting from this highlighter and it's not a super powdery highlighter so you're not picking up too much product at once which means when you do use the kabuki with this you're getting just enough to get this soft wash on your cheeks that's not providing too much pigment not too much sparkle but yet just enough to kind of give you a little subtle glow and i think you know that's a really smart inclusion there to include that that particular brush style so i'm really enjoying the highlighter i think it's very very well done moving on to the lips the 168 halo cocoa flash if you're not familiar with the cocoa flashes they are more of one of those lip oil lip balms so they have a, an oilier texture you know if you have issues with lip products staying on the lips and not you know maybe the issue is that they end up bleeding and so forth these will do that they're an oily formula so if you don't want them to spread you know through lip lines and things like that definitely use like a lip pencil or something around the edges and i actually think um you know they're a really great formula for summer i wear them a lot kind of as like a lip balm something just easy to put on they're light they're not going to have long-term wear and again they feel more like a lip oil on so the 168 halo shade i think is a really beautiful shade if you're looking for something more equivalent to a translucent lip balm but you just want the very faintest hint of something is this is not something if you're looking for color and you're looking for a lavender uh, you know lipstick or lip gloss or lip balm or anything like that this is not going to give you this this gives you just the faintest hint but i do like it because it helps cool things off it kind of, you know, it kind of acts a little bit like the Stilo Lumiere in the fact that it will add just the faintest hint of lavender to whatever you put it on top of. And it just like cools it off a little bit. So I personally like it because I wear these like barely there shades a ton throughout the day after, you know, my lipstick starts wearing off and so forth. So that's why I ended up purchasing it. Uh, I think it's a really great way to kind of revive lipstick that's fading and give it a slightly different hue. And it does have sparkle in it, so I think it's just really pretty. But it's, if you're looking for color, don't get it. It's pretty much clear. Now, 172 Flannery. This is so close in color to the shade in the Imaginaire quad, and I really like it. I like those brownie shades of lip products but sometimes they can be a little bit too warm or a little bit too deep. This one is like a mauve brownie shade. And I just think the combination is very fresh. You know, it has those like cooler purple tones I really like. And I love mixing it with this Imaginaire quad. 
So the Flannery shade, I think, is definitely a win. Now, the Rouge Allure inks, these are a liquid matte lipstick, and I think they are very comfortable on the lips. I actually find them a little bit easier to use than some other liquid lipsticks because they're a thin formula, but yet they're not thin and runny, so they kind of stay where you put them during application, and yet they're not one of those thicker, gloopier formulas where you're kind of having uh, more issues like spreading it evenly. This really spreads out evenly, let a layer dry, add more if necessary. I've at, you know, honestly, I feel like after two layers, you don't need to add more. It doesn't really increase the pigment level, but three, in my opinion, would kind of be the max there. All right, so let's move on to a few comparisons. We're gonna start off with some lip comparisons. I only have one other of the Rouge Allure uh, Ink Fusions. This is in shade 836 Idalique, and it's another red. So I thought I would compare this but Idalique is gonna be a bit more of a burgundy red. You can see it's gonna be much cooler in tone. And you can see that Evo Evo Evocation is gonna be more neutral. It is not a warm red, it's really a neutral red. So it's gonna be warmer in tone than Idalique, but it's a really beautiful shade. So I'm really happy to have both of those. Now, as for the lipsticks, I also showed a couple other lip products when I was doing the demos. One of the ones that I used in the first demo here is one of the new Rouge Allure L'Extra. This is the limited edition shade in 814 and it's kind of a peachy shade. So I wanted to swatch that so you could kind of see how that goes with the collection since it is limited edition. I think it's a really great shade to go with this collection. So, you know, that might be something that appeals to you as well. And another product that I pulled out for something that goes with this is the lip gloss in 166, which I think is called Physical. And thank you so much, Margaret, who actually gifted this to me. And that is this peachy shade here. So it's just another shade that goes really well with this. So it might be something you already have in your collection, but it is a permanent color in the gloss line. Now, moving on, um, this here is 162 Sunbeam in the Rouge Coco Flash. This came out, was this last year? Just another shade that I thought would look nice with these. And then a couple of comparisons. This is another Rouge Coco Flash in 54 Boy. You can see that this is very, very sheer, but it has kind of like this browner tint. There's also a shade called Easy, which is a little bit more pink than this. I must have that in one of my purses somewhere because it's not up here. But uh, yeah, I wear it Easy all the time, but you can see that it's not gonna be as sheer, uh, you know, as Halo. Halo is obviously gonna be pretty much clear, but you can see it's not gonna be nearly as pigmented as Flannery. And then we also have 158 Dawn, which I think was also last year. So here is Dawn. And you can see that Dawn is basically a warmer version of Flannery. It's a brownie shade, but this is going to be a warmer tone compared to Flannery, which has those plum tones in there. And just one more quick swatch. This is Halo. Just going to build that up a bit. You can see it's pretty translucent, but I wanted to compare it to the Dior Lip Maximizer in 027. So this is the opal shade that came out with their spring collection. It also has like a touch of lavender in there. They're really pretty close to each other, but you can see that the Dior has just a little bit more of a purple reflect than the Chanel. As for comparisons with the nail polish, I actually don't have a shade like this already, which is why I ended up picking that one up. So I don't have any comparisons for that. Now, as for the highlighter, I have comparisons of that in the video on it. However, I forgot to swatch this one, which is the Hermes Plein Air in 02 Mirage. So I'm gonna put a swatch of this right here by the highlighter. And oh, they look much more similar there. Let me uh, build that up a little. Just add another layer of that here. But you can see that the tones are gonna to be a little bit different. And I have to say that Hermes is very subtle on my skin as well. But you can see that you've got more of these peachier tones in the Chanel. It's also gonna be a little bit darker 
the Hermes is a little bit more golden. They're both pretty subtle on the skin. Um, you know, they're both going to be one of those firmer formulas where they're not super powdery. You're not picking up too much at one time. So I think they both work well for subtle highlighters. And I just wanted to mention what I used in the second demo on the cheeks. I used a base of the Pesh Cosmique. And I think this is one of the La Comet blushes. And I wanted to share this because it is still available. And I use this all the time. It looks like nothing, right? Like you don't have much color. Don't expect to use this really on its own unless you want a barely there look. It's very sheer. You can see that the tones of it go really well with the Imaginaire quad but I love to give it a base and then top the blush on there because you can see it really gives this subtle radiance. It doesn't really give sparkle or glow or anything like that, but it gives a soft radiance or shine to your skin that just kind of gives you that glow from within look. So I just wanted to share that one with you as well as the blush I use. This is 99 Rose Petal, which I think also just goes really well with this particular collection. Let's put it right here. And if you are a little, you know, unless you're going for really warm tones all over, I think this is a nice addition because it's cooler than this, but it's not an overly cool shade. So it just balances things well. As for eyeshadows, this is 204 Tisse Vendome. And this is going to be pretty different, but it is peachy in tone, so I thought I would include this. So you've got kind of those neutral shades in there, and those, they don't really match. This looks like it might kind of go with this, but when you look at it, you can see this is going to be more of a soft doe brown. This has more of the berries, and this is going to be more orange. So these are like a little bit more yellow. The tone of this kind of matches a combination of the shimmer shade and the fourth shade in Imaginaire but it's just gonna be a little bit more orange and they're gonna be more strongly pigmented. And then just a few more comparisons. This is Dior 719 Organza. So this, I'm gonna skip the gold shade here, but this is actually gonna skip the brown too. So just these peachier shades. This is the spring quad from Dior this year. We'll put this here so it's a little closer. And you can see that they're going to be more pigmented. You do have kind of a similar tone. It's kind of like a warmer version of this, more like when you mix these two together. And this shade here, which is the middle shade, it's more nude than the peachier shades in here. And then this deeper peachy shade is definitely much more pigmented. We also have 429 Toile de Jouy. And I'm going to take a look at this. Well, we'll just swatch this whole one, but they really not going to quite go. We'll just put it this way. Okay, so this is a topper, so I can barely see it. Okay, and let me get Imaginaire down there. So here's Imaginaire. I'm just going to go this way so we can kind of see them together. So... Here's Toile de Jouy with Imaginaire. And I feel like these first three shades kind of go well with that. Tones are gonna be slightly different, but you know, they do kind of give you the same vibe, but the Dior gives you just a little bit more variation with some deeper shades in there. So last thing I wanted to compare, this is the Hindage Boy Tears. As I mentioned, the formula of these, you know, they both perform the same way. They both feel similarly on the skin. You can see that Boy Tears is going to be more vibrant. It has a stronger base color. It has more sheen and shine to it. It's gonna, so it's going to be more intense. The Chanel is definitely going to be more subtle, but they're both very close in formula. Let me put this over here, which you can barely see. Here's the Chanel right here. And here's the Hindash. So not here, just. So final thoughts on this collection. I think if you are looking for a springtime peachy look and you like those sheer shades and things like that, this is a really great collection to take a look at. You know, this is definitely going to be something that's work appropriate. It's kind of classic in the colors, you know, updating some neutrals with some more peachy vibes. 
I think that the colors that they used for the lip products and the nail products, I'm really happy with those. I think everything performs well. And I have to say, I'm really liking the Stilo Lumiere Regard in 567. I do not have 557. It looks more matte. Um, it doesn't have the sparkle that this one has. And for me, I don't really see the purpose of getting that one. I haven't tried it, but I don't, for me, I want it to add the sparkle and I want it to add a little bit of that like pinkish tone to it that we have that like milky pink kind of shade to help lighten it up. And that's what this does so beautifully. So if I had to narrow it down to my favorite items from this collection, um, you know, it's really hard. I think number one would be the highlighter. I really am enjoying the highlighter. The Stilo Lumiere definitely has to be on there because I think it's kind of like a, a unique product. I, I'm really enjoying that. Now it does have that, you know, click top or twist top type of application. So most of the time I twist it and I get product right away. But the one time I twisted it, um, you know, it took a lot of twists to get the product to come out. So just something to note, that's something that happens with all packaging like that. Um, following that, I think I really like the nail polish and the halo, you know, lip balm, because I just, I know that's going to be something that I will most likely use all the way up. So those would have to be my top picks from this collection, but I'm really happy with everything that I picked up and I hope this was helpful. So let me know if you're interested in anything from this collection, if you ordered anything. And again, I order everything through Jalissa and Paloma at the Aventura Boutique. I don't live anywhere near them. I have a local boutique, but I order from them. I get great service. They ship it to me. So if you're anywhere in the US, you can definitely order from them as well. And I will have all of their information down below in the description box. And they just, you know, they always package everything very nicely and give you some great samples and so forth. So thanks so much. And I hope to see you again soon. So have a great day and stay safe and healthy.